Okay, if you notice this, I turn it on and turn it off and the wiper will not park. It stays in this position and I'm not getting full travel. See, it should come down over here and when you turn it off, it should park. It should come all the way down here. Plus, I don't know if you heard it, but it's kind of clunking in there and that really concerns me. I'm thinking maybe the gears are shot. But we're going to go ahead and open it up. I've already pulled the panel off. This is what it looks like. And you just pull these little pins loose. And this plastic cover comes off. Oh, look. Look what I found. A screw. I'm going to grab this motor. Look at that. This screw is missing. That screw is missing. So the whole motor is moving around up in here. This bolt has loosened up on this bracket. What are we thinking is causing all that? But look, we got a crack. Oh no, the housing's cracked. That's not good. I've seen people try to glue these. That doesn't work. To make these bolts fall out and to crack the housing, what in the world's going on here? Obviously there's some movement and vibration. So we're gonna pull this out and get it on the bench. And then we're gonna look at some of the other motors we have and see if we can find something that will make a good replacement in this white wagon here. When I think back over the last 15 to 20 years, almost half of these wagon rear wiper motor assemblies are broken when I pull them out. And I'd often wonder, well, what's causing them to break like that? Look at this one. The whole side just broke right out of it. You think of what kind of stress would cause that housing to break? Granted, the housing is cast aluminum. Let's take a look at a couple more that I pulled out. This one is cracked right down the area where the motor mounts, and uh, that's pretty common. You can see that deep crack there, and then finally the third one. Now, there's three or four other ones I didn't pull out that are also broken. Arms are broken off, but look at the crack there. Now, for those of you familiar with these old wagons, have you had your wiper assembly out lately? Enter our project for today. We decided to take one that had uh, good housing and find one that had a good motor and build a good one from parts from two different wiper assemblies. And we got into this, we cleaned it all up. Notice, I wanted to show you this. You've seen all these. It's obviously not a lack of grease <laughs> on this gear assembly that's causing the failure. Sometimes you take these apart, there's like a half a cup of grease in there. So we got this one all cleaned up and right away we notice there's a problem. The shaft won't turn. Look at that. The shaft is literally frozen in that housing. Now I'm beginning to realize that this is probably the cause of burnout motors and cracked housings is that shaft does not get lubricated and over time it starts to drag and seize and puts unbelievable stress on that motor drive assembly. So we're going to take this now and see if we can lubricate the shaft and get it freed up so that we can use this housing in our rebuild. I'm going to use a curved tip syringe along with some thick synthetic grease and we're going to see if we can get this to wick down into that shaft. We'll do it first from the back side and then we'll turn it over and this may take a couple applications. We, if we can get it to move then this is going to be able to wick down in the shaft so we may if we get it to move we'll come back and do it again and we'll keep doing this until we can get that shaft to freely move in the housing. Look what we did. We decided to put the wiper on there so we could get some force because this shaft did not want to turn. So we're going to try this. We're going to start by just wiggling it. We don't want to overstress that wiper assembly, but uh, let's see what happens. Here we go. Let's see if we can get that shaft to move. Man, look at that. Okay, we got it to move. We were afraid we may have to beat that out of there, which is really a pain. But now that we've got it moving, we'll be able to wick more lubricant down in that shaft. And we may have to mess around with this in a half hour or more. But we'll come back and report in and, and show you whether or not we have success. <laughs> a 
Look at the difference. Now we have a very smooth, tight operation on that shaft. We did have to use PB Blaster, and it just needed something that was really thin and could get down in there, and I would say we did three or four applications and then worked it like crazy for about 15 minutes, and it finally broke free to where you get that nice, smooth operation. So we're going to put everything back together, and we'll test it before we put it back in the wagon. Here's the unit that we pieced together to go back into the white wagon. We got a frame housing out of one and a motor out of another one. And we ended up with a really nice unit. We even found a bracket that wasn't broken. Almost all these brackets are cracked right through here. So it's pretty amazing the amount of strain that these motor drive assemblies get. It was no surprise to many of you that lubrication was the key problem here. But I think some of you might be surprised that the problem is right here. This is the number one problem. Lubrication inside doesn't seem to be a problem, but it's that shaft. And you can only lubricate this by removing this from the wagon. So this is something you may want to add to your yearly maintenance item if you have a wagon and you particularly drive it in a lot of rain where you get moisture that can get down through this shaft. You'd think this seal could seal it totally, but over time, you know, Water gets down in there, causes corrosion, and causes the shaft to start to drag and eventually bind. And what I ended up doing, because I took about three of these apart and actually fixed a couple to resell, is I did a complete instructional video on how to take one of these apart, and overhaul it, and lubricate it. And that's available on my website. I also have a couple good units for sale, some motors and some brackets. So if you need parts for your old 300 TD wagon, be sure and check out the links below this video and they'll take you right to my website. While I was at, I said, if I'm gonna have a working wiper, I need to have a working squirter. And sure enough, I pulled the tank out. You know, I've been leaking wiper fluid in down in the wheel well there because the seal was bad. So I took the tank, removed the motor, tested the motor, put a new seal in it, put this back in, filled it up, with window washer fluid and now I want to show you how well this works. I also installed a new wiper blade. You're going to be impressed with this. Look at that. Look at how smooth and quiet that runs. Now I can maybe make just a little adjustment on that squirter there to have it squirt a little bit closer to the rear glass but hey, isn't that a beautiful thing? We've got a quiet, smooth working motor, good squirters. I'm ready to go cruising in some heavy rain.